<sighs> hey, well, mm, I made a tuna sandwich. Oh, Alexa, what's today? Today is Tuesday, November 21st. November 21st. Thanksgiving's in what? Like, real soon, right? I don't have any plans for Thanksgiving. Um, and I don't even care. I know, it sounds terrible, right? I just don't care. Um, you know, I know. It used to it used to be a big deal in my family. That was one of the holidays. That was a big deal. Especially for my mom and my auntie, Rita. They always thought Christmas and Thanksgiving were like super big deals. I still like Christmas. But I don't care about Thanksgiving. You know what? It's kind of like... This is going to be a long, a long video vlog. I have so much to say about food. I have a lot. To, oh, this is a tuna sandwich, tuna fish, lettuce, and white bread. Really simple. Mm, I have a lot. I'm going to talk with my mouth full, too. Somebody called me disgusting, so I don't care. But anyway, um, I have a lot to say about food. And Thanksgiving is, see, The Grinch, right? Think about the movie The Grinch. Was one of my, besides Gone with the Wind, The Grinch was my mother's second favorite movie. And um, I watched that a lot. You're a mean one. Yeah, I love The Grinch. Anyway, um, you know, The Grinch had a, had, we saw like three different Grinch movies, right? What does the Grinch have to do with food? Not that much, but there's a there's a parallel line I want to talk about. Why did the Grinch hate Christmas? Why do you hate Christmas? What would I mean? Think about it. In Jim Carrey's big monologue, he really kind of covers why the Grinch hated Christmas, because he didn't like the concept that most people make Christmas about the gifts and presents and you know boxes under the tree. He didn't like that. He thought Christmas was supposed to be, you know, deeper than that. Mm. Not that the Grinch wasn't wrong. And that's why at the end, you know, he becomes the hero instead of the villain. But he didn't like Christmas because he felt like people had the wrong idea about Christmas. And... Like I said, he wasn't wrong at the end of at but he, the people showed him once the people, the the who the who's the who but the who buddies the who's in Who'sville once they showed the Grinch that that's not really how they felt. Once he saw that, that's when he became the hero. Now the parallel line about this and food and Thanksgiving is why I just don't care about Thanksgiving anymore. Mm, it's same. Hmm. I'm grateful every day. I am. I'm a, I'm a very grateful person. In my 52 years of life, saying thank you has never been difficult for me. No. I know how to say thank you and mean it. Please is a little bit harder because that's when you're asking for something. And I've always struggled with asking for something. Mm. I'm sorry. Sometimes I lie. Sometimes I mean it. But it's whether I'm lying or telling the truth about it, I'm sorry. It's not that hard to get out. But please, please is tough because I always felt like please was sort of a manipulating word. It's like, you know they don't want to do it. So you're going to add that please, hoping that, you know, it's almost like begging. Now, if someone gets on their knees and begs, you know, it's really hard to say no to them. And it's really hard to say no to someone who says please, because that's the polite way of begging. But um, so I struggle with the word please, but I'm leading, I'm leading to the food conversation. Believe me, I'm leading to it. All right. So let me start with a few companies. And I only have one company's name. A few companies that are trying to do something bigger and better than Meals on Wheels, which was a program 
that I saw for many years that tried to help, you know, old people, old people who lived on their own or um, sometimes they worked with old people in the old folks' homes. Mm, most of the time, the old folks' homes have their own cooks, but it was a program. And they would deliver, like, little food packages to old people so to make sure that old people wouldn't starve to death. Now, I ragged on it a few years back because if you looked at what Meals on Wheels was eight years ago, it was pretty pathetic. I saw what they were bringing my uncle, God rest his soul. He was old and, and he had, he was a Meals on Wheels recipient. Um, he, they would bring him these little, basically it was like, have you ever seen Swanson's, you know, hungry man, frozen dinner? It was something like that, but actually Swanson's was better. That's what, that's what they were giving to my uncle and any old people who were on. That was, this was like, you know, five to eight years ago. This is what it looked like. And I started ragging on it. I said, that's how they treat grandma and grandpa. They're just going to give them one cookie and, a, I mean, and a piece of, you know, and some chicken nuggets or whatever. That's what they're going to get. Oh, I saw, so I, I said, my, my fresh tuna fish sandwich is, my uncle would like my fresh tuna fish sandwich better than, you know, that pathetic thing. I mean, dang, even the, even the high school lunch looks better than that. I'm, I might as well stock his refrigerator with frozen hungry mans. So I was a little upset, you know, just felt like that wasn't the right way to treat our ancestors and our forefathers and our grandmas. But, uh, So there's a couple of companies that I was um, raising my eyebrow about because they wanted to provide that service. And it wasn't just like a diet thing, like um, I'm not talking about lean cuisine or uh, what do you call it? Weight Watchers. It, about eight years ago, I researched Weight Watchers. Um, you know, my, <laughs> you could go to the store and buy... 10 packages of lean cuisines mm, and you'll spend about 20, 30 bucks, right? Okay. You got, now you got 10 packages. So you, you've got a week's worth at least of, of the lean cuisines, right? Because, but if you go to Weight Watchers or one of those other programs, that 20 bucks or 30 bucks, that's, that's nothing. That, that'll get you one meal, one meal. It's ridiculous. And I saw some new programs that were trying to, you know, do something better than, um, what is it, the, 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 the Meals on Wheels, like HelloFresh. So I signed up. I wanted to see what this was about. Not because I don't know how to make a tuna sandwich or, you know, or put a hungry man frozen dinner in the microwave. No. There was no different than Weight Watchers except for a their platform was to send you fresh ingredients. So they send you this box, very, very nice insulated box with all fresh ingredients. Beautiful, beautiful tomatoes, beautiful fruits and vegetables, everything perfect, fresh, right from the farm. Didn't look manufactured like or chemicalized or any kind of thing that they do with the grocery produce that, you know, have you ever seen the some of the tomatoes in the grocery store? And then you look at the tomatoes at the flea market, totally different, right? Right? You ever ask yourself why the tomatoes look so different? They taste different too. And the weird thing is, the grocery tomato costs more, even though it tastes worse. The flea market tomatoes are cheaper and they taste better. So weird. But anyway, um, so I was trying to figure it out, you know. I got gypped. The Hello Fresh company kind of pissed me off because they were way overpriced, way overpriced. I think I, I think I shot down one of my credit cards. <laughs> I mean, I probably like half my credit card debt was just spent on trying to understand Hello Fresh, which I don't have don't have nothing nice to say about that company. I really don't. Not only is the the premise just ridiculous, 
but the um, but the prices and the customer service were just plain terrible. So I canceled it as soon as I woke up, and uh, I won't do that again. <clears throat> but this is a food conversation. This is a food conversation. This is a, a sloppy tuna sandwich, right? It's no big deal, right? Anybody can make this. Mm, a seven-year-old can make a tuna sandwich, right? Mm, but it's fresh. It's fresh. Fresh out of the can. Fresh lettuce, fresh bread, and a fresh tuna right out of the can. It's healthy. I've got the oil. What is it? The omega oils or whatever they call that. I've got vitamins. I've got I've got some green going on. I've got some fiber going on. You know, it's healthy. Mm -hmm. There's no grease. There's no uh, lard. There's no, you know, super, super fattening, disgusting thing about this fresh tuna sandwich. So and what did it cost me? I mean, it's a, it's a loaf of white bread, a head of lettuce, and a can of tuna. It's pretty cheap. I and mean, that keep you going for a long time. Actually, I could even cut out the bread if, you know, if I wanted to appease the, the carb haters. I could just eat the tuna on the lettuce. I, mean, I could appease those people who hate the carbs. Don't eat carbs. They're bad for you. I'm so tired of people telling you what to eat. You know, I'm really tired of it. I mean, you got the vegans. Oh, my God. Five years ago, they were just the most annoying people I had ever had to talk to. Oh, my God. Meat is murder. You're, you're, you are you're eat you eat my friends. I'm like, look, they're my friends, too. Uh, you know, I love, you know, Moo Moo. And I love, uh, uh, you know, the, the mascot, you know, for any chicken sandwich. You know, bok, bok, bok. I love the chickens. And, you know, but you think that that makes you superior to say that, well, I'm a, I'm a, a, a veggie-saurus. You know, you're not a T-Rex. You're a, you're a long neck that just eats from the trees like a giraffe. You know, humans are omnivorous. If you look at our teeth, we have fang teeth. We can eat. We are very fortunate that we can eat both vegetables and meats. Mm. Not every creature can. Not every living thing can. I mean, a giraffe will probably get sick if he tries to eat meat. And a lion will probably get sick if he tries to eat spinach. You know, so I just kind of get annoyed when they try to tell me that, you know, I cannot eat what I want to eat. We, we can. You say, okay, well, we evolved from the monkeys. Monkeys are vegetarians. Maybe they're vegetarians because they don't want to go through the trouble of having to slaughter a cow. Ever think about that? Maybe they're vegetarians because they don't want to, you know, deal with a gun and to go shoot a lion and, and eat that lion because they could. They could, they could, if they, if they got a gun, you know, Planet of the Apes, they could get a gun and shoot a lion and eat them if they wanted to. Anyway, I'm just saying like some of these theories about veganism get on my nerves. I understood why there were some religious people who, I met a girl, Pratima, she was in, from India, dot, you know, she had the dot on her head and she, her family was Hindu, right? Religious. And they would not eat. They were vegans for religious purposes. It was against their religion. Why? Because they worshipped the cow. They worshipped the cow. Okay? And that was in the movie, Moses. Remember the movie Moses or the Ten Commandments with Charlton Heston? When all the people started screwing up and he was on the mountain and, and God was putting the Ten Commandments on the stones... They were all worshiping the cow. So what were they? Hindus? Who was trying to give the Ten Commandments to a bunch of Hindus? Well, that kind of, that seems like a silly kind of plan, doesn't it? I mean, they don't even want to eat the cow. They don't even want to eat the cow, you know? And I asked Pratima, I asked her, I said, you can't even eat an Oreo cookie? She said, no, because there's milk in the Oreo cookie and it comes from the cow. They could not touch anything that came from the cow. 
It was their religion. So anyway, Thanksgiving, you know, it's a weird holiday. It's supposed to be this holiday where diversity and all the different cultures, the melting pot sits together at the table and in harmony, love and peace, he gets to eat this turkey. But, you know, what it, if they're not going to eat, if the Indians from India are not going to eat the cow, because that's part of their religion, and the vegans who just think eating any animal is just a horrible thing to do, and then you have, you know, people like like the my family who raised me to sit at the table that was beautifully set and my, while my mom slaves for eight hours to make the turkey and all the, the stuff that goes with it. And then, you know, they're going to, like a Martha Stewart type, right? And then they're going to throw what? Pumpkin pie at Martha Stewart because she wants to eat some turkey? Or there's granny somewhere in some stupid little apartment somewhere starving to death because no one remembered to invite her to the table? You know, this is why, I mean, I, ha I have I have some issues, I mean, about Thanksgiving, you know. It's not the history that bothers me. It's it's the conversations and, and the conversations and the opinions that people have about food because food has become more than political, more than, you know, financial. To some people, it's sacred. To some people, it's part of their religious methods. You know, the Jews have their kosher thing. The Indians have their vegan thing, no cow. The, uh, you know, there's, there's different religions who have different beliefs. But, you know, I mean... I'm from an, a, a basically like an Italian Catholic family and we were allowed to eat anything. So I can't relate to that. All I can relate to is, look, this tuna sandwich is fresh. It tastes good and it's healthy and it doesn't cost much. That's pragmatism. I'm not going to go sit at some turkey table with a bunch of people I don't know and wonder you know, why the heck there's no turkey on the table or listen to someone preach about veganism. I I just don't want to deal with Thanksgiving anymore. Anyway, I hope you don't have any food problems and happy Thanksgiving.